Welcome back to part two of the London Brighton South Coast uh, Railway Allford uh, Roxy Mouldings kit. Uh, we are now on the finishing stage. So this stage obviously begins with uh, cleaning and basically degreasing the kit. I've already washed it in various uh, no-nonsense sort of cleaning products, soapy water and all that kind of thing. Um, so the chassis is already uh, primed in grey. Um, so this is grey primer which is just generally Halford's um, can spray or rattle can spray. So this is primed already. Needs a few more coats of primer and still a little bit of cleaning up to do. The body is a bit more complicated um, as I'm going from mahogany look finish uh, like my other two uh, Stroudley carriages. Uh, this needs a slightly different approach. So the carriage roof will be primed in white primer and then spray painted in white. And the carriage body you can see here I've removed all the handrails and couplings and all that other few bits and pieces. Um, and I've left the interior in and taken the floor out. So this will now be primed. Now to get a good base colour for mahogany you need to use uh, red Halford's primer which I'll put on next and leave to dry overnight and then after that I will paint the interior and then paint the exterior in uh, Phoenix Precision Paints mahogany colour uh, which I will show you the status of doing that um, after priming. Okay, so in the last section, as I said, I was going to prime all the body sections and chassis sections for this carriage. I've now also added the uh, rain strips on the roof here. This has been primed with white primer, again from Halfords. This is what I normally use. So all the vents are in place, handrails, rain strips, etc. And then primed in white primer. This will then be either painted or you can just leave it as it is in white primer and just give it a light coat of varnish just to protect it. The body itself, we're going for a mahogany finish. So I've gone with a red primer from Halfords and in a similar way I'm doing it in a similar fashion to the teak finish. So slightly watered down mahogany paint from uh, Phoenix Precision Paints. Uh, so this has all been um, primed as you can see, all done and the interior needs painting as does the outside. Um, I'll be cleaning up some of the insides as well uh, where the handrails go in uh, near the doors so I can solder the handrails in place after painting. I'll also have to clean up the um, actual handles on the doors as they've been primed as well. So they just need cleaning up, uh, getting it ready to add paint. And lastly, I've already gone to paint on the chassis as it's just a standard black finish. So this has been primed in grey primer from Halfords again. All these primers are from Halfords. And this has been painted with a matte black uh, finish so it's all been painted and just ready for a little bit of protection and any other under frame details like battery boxes etc. So that having been done I need to now clean up the uh, handles on the body and the rear of the uh, body sides to solder on the handrails themselves. So I will check back in a few days and um, see where we're at. So on to the painting stage. Um, so the body has been cleaned up in the areas that I needed around the uh, grab handle holes behind the, uh, all the interior of the carry so I can solder them in uh, when I need to. Um, but overall this is now ready for painting um, and the paints I'll be using is mainly this one which is from Phoenix Precision Paint, uh, P988 uh, Mahogany. And 
the way I put this on is basically it's thinned down so the red uh, of the primer comes through and gives it that mahogany kind of looky colour to it so it's got an underlying red um, sort of colour to it and of course need some brushes and some thinner to clean the brushes as well as thin down the paint so I will take you through bit by bit um, what I'll be doing of course mahogany the paint is the first stage then we'll go onto the interior paint the interior brown and then also then I'll go on to the lining phase which is probably the longest part of it say so the paint is mixed uh, thoroughly a couple of minutes um, paintbrush is ready I've got a, a large brush and sort of in the middle uh, just so I can get around some smaller areas um, it's best just to thin down the paint a little bit uh, when it's on the brush rather than when it's in the pot and uh, what we'll do is really it's just put it on and you just need a nice even colour to it so we just start down the bottom and we don't want it too thick where it comes up so dark um, but it's not even got the nice red showing through of the actual wood effect if you go and look at a carriage say the LBSC all first then you can sort of see there's an underlying uh, red or reddish colour to it of course typically I'm in the shade so I can't really see if it's actually working or not but uh, just wipe it down a little bit to get some of a darker colour off spread it around a little bit make sure it's all the window frames drop lights etc okay so I have painted uh, the whole of the body and it is a nice reddish kind of mahogany colour this has just had a bit of uh, varnish put over it just to protect it a bit uh, from moving it around and doing more decoration to it uh, the door handles have all been cleaned uh, just with a sharp knife and all the ends have been done and the other side has been done so next I really need to do the interior and paint the walls brown or a slightly different colour at least and then it will be on to the more interesting and time consuming uh, lining out of the carriage um, I've just discovered as well from some Bluebell members that this carriage that they're restoring which I think is 328 or something like that I'll have to check is not going to be mahogany brown it's going to be more of a umber brown with simplified lining which made my day especially after painting it um, but either way I'm going to stick with the mahogany theme because uh, the vents on the roof are well, it's three on mine and the one they're doing is going to be five uh, so it's going to be a bit different so we'll go on to the next stage which is lining So onto the lining of this carriage. Uh, this carriage has quite a lot of lining on it. Pretty much every panel, every window is lined out. Um, lined out in gold, this particular livery. Today I've done half a carriage which you can see here. Um, now I can't touch this as it's still, you can still smudge it so it's still wet. Um, it only becomes safe you varnish it so I have to progress down the coach or carriage in a particular way so I don't smudge any of what I've done already um, for this you can see a pen in the background this is a gel pen uh, this has got a nib size on it of 0.6 I think and this is what I use to line this carriage out I picked this 
um, method from something I read quite a long time ago on the London Brighton South Coast group uh, which is on one of their digest readers uh, newsletters which showed one of these Roxy Molding carriages lined out with a gel pen so I will show you very quickly a section so you can follow the great thing is with this gel pen is you can wipe it off with either a, a damp and I mean a very uh, a very lightly damp cotton bud or a slightly damp paintbrush and you can clean it up and start again or you can wait until it's just about dry and just move it away with a cocktail stick so I'll show you a bit more on that you probably won't see very much uh, due to how close I have to work with the model but hopefully I can sort of show you the technique so I've zoomed it out a little bit so you can sort of see what I'm doing but because this is um, etched I can sort of use the edge and I'll use uh, the carriage window so just lie, lay it on this side and just catch the edge So after pretty much a full day of lining and into the very early morning I've now completed one side of this carriage. I varnished this uh, today uh, while the sun was out and it was nice and warm in here at 40 degrees so it dried very nicely. What I find with this gel pen as I may mention in the last part it stays wet so if you catch it with your finger or the pen itself then it can smudge quite easily so applying completely one side and then applying varnish over it is the safe way to go so you don't smudge it off again um, doing this now allows me to go onto the other side and do the same again um, after this we'll go on to transfers but I'm not going to show you the other side doing it because it will take forever so I'll move on to transfers next, uh, which I will show you in the next section. So on to transfers. This is the more uh, enjoyable part, a bit more straightforward, and uh, it's a sign of we're near the end, hopefully. Um, so the carriage has now been lined out, which you can see here, if I can get it in some light. You can see I've added the handrails to the doors, so all soldered in place, and everything is lined out, ready to receive the transfers. This carriage has been lacquered a couple of times, just to protect the lining, so it doesn't get damaged or wash off. Um, that's all been sealed in with uh, some Valio uh, spray, or any sort of... Uh, varnish lacquer spray will do so transfers um, London Brighton South Coast transfers are quite difficult to get hold of at the moment uh, this is quite an old set that I've had for years uh, this has actually been purchased from uh, the London Brighton South Coast uh, Circle or Modeler's Circle I've had them for a long time um, but they're still usable these are just normal water slide transfers, so you cut them off, put them into water, it softens up the transfer a little bit, and then you can slide them off onto your model. Or what you can do is you can use some uh, micro sole, which softens the transfer, and also basically uh, sucks it down to the surface, a bit like uh, Hornby's or Humbrol's uh, decal fix. So that sucks it down to the surface, makes it supple, and you can basically bend things around corners and make it uh, 
suck it down to the surface if you've got some rivets or lines or or some indentations in the surface so you can use that as well you apply it to the surface and it sucks it down onto uh, the body of the vehicle or carriage so I'll do a little bit of this I'm not going to go into massive detail because it will take absolutely ages um, so let's go straight on to doing the transfers okay so I've cut up the transfers I need which are basically third class for this vehicle and also the crest which goes in the center of the carriage which would be on the actual door itself uh, for this carriage it's uh, mahogany um, so that depicts a certain point in time um, so for example uh, the mahogany versions or carriages need uh, the red shading on the lettering and numbers and if you're sort of in the umber brown period you'll need a blue uh, shaded uh, numbers and letters which go on the carriage or wagon or whatever it is you're doing um, so that's basically how it works I and mean, then obviously later on it will go into black shading etc so it goes in time period so do look up what you require or read up on what era takes what lettering and what shading of uh, letter or number so these will now go into the water and they will then break down the, um, the transfer so you can slide it off of the paper um, using cocktail sticks and some tweezers etc and maneuvering it into position So the transfer has been in some water for a few minutes and it's nice and uh, released from the paper. I'm just going to put some uh, microsole on there which will soften the transfer and basically suck it down to the surface. Using cocktail stick I'll just manoeuvre uh, this decal off of the paper. don't need the paper anymore so move it out of the way. Just need to get it nice and central and the right way up. There you go, so that'll be in the centre of the carriage. A little bit more to the right, that looks about right for me. It's in the centre of the door, so that's nice and central. So that will then uh, set off the solution, and that will suck it down to the door, and then that will allow me to come back a little bit later and add the numbers to the middle of the crest on the carriage. While I'm still here I can add the uh, third class to the door as well. So I'll just slide that off. So again it's been in the water for a few minutes. So line that up so it's in position. Add the microsole solution. And then I can just slide this off onto the door itself pull that away so I don't need the paper anymore get it nice and lined up nice and central that looks okay so you got your crest and your lettering on there as well. You may need to adjust it a little bit as the solution goes off um, just so it stays where you put it but uh, overall that's what we want. So another four of the third class a little bit of waiting for the solution to go off and then we can put the numbers on it and then put the varnish over the top and in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one side I've done earlier, which is the other side of course. So I've added all the third class, the crest, and the numbers also to the middle of that crest, which is not really viewable or seeable. Um, but there we have it. So that's all varnished in. It's been sat out in this glorious sunshine for a few hours to harden up and also to go off. So I'll get on with the other side. And that'll be the transfers done and then we can move on to windows now if you follow this channel I have done windows before so it won't be a very big section um, but there'll be a link in the description below but we'll do a little bit on that and we'll go on to put on the roof on for the final part
Okay, so windows. Now I'm not going to go into loads of detail on this as there is already a video on my channel. So if you look back or go down the description underneath this video, you'll find a link uh, showing you a bit more detail about putting glazing on your carriages. But I'll just run through it very quickly. So in this kit you will get some window material like this. This is clear acetate sheet. Um, this is usually used for overhead projectors and things like that. And you can cut it into sections with a sharp craft knife and then you glue it in position with something called glue and glaze. Do not use super glue because it will react and go very misty and foggy. So any sort of PVA um, varnish um, or something tacky at least. So that's why we use uh, glue and glaze from Lux Materials or Canopy Glue and that's how you add for windows. Now if you want more detail it's covered in another video in my workbench series uh, or I will add a link underneath in the description if you want more information. Okay, so onto the interior of the carriage, we've added the uh, windows, which you can see in there, which you can sort of see, even though it's see-through. Uh, so they're all been added, um, hopefully you've watched the other video about adding them, so you know what you're doing. So the next part is basically adding passengers. Um, now I've bought some cheap Chinese figures, which I think are probably HO rather than double O. And you can buy these for four ninety nine for like a hundred or so and so. I mean they're not painted very well, as you can see, but you can touch them up if you wish, which is probably the wrong word. Um, but at the end of the day, they're only going in a carriage, and you're not really going to see them that much, as long as it looks populated and people are in there. Uh, that should be fine. So a little bit of super glue on their rear ends, stick them in the seat and that should be good enough. Uh, I try not to make it too populated um, so it's not rammed with people but on a normal sort of running day with a few people around. Um, so that looks reasonable to me. One empty compartment which you might find and most of them with a few people, one or two, maybe three. And I think that's enough really for this carriage and um, on to adding the roof. So adding the roof, probably the topping off ceremony of finishing this carriage. Um, I generally glue the roof on to the carriage. Um, I've seen others use double sided sellotape. Uh, of industrial strength so it doesn't fall off. Um, I generally use Araldite um, which will glue it on quite nicely. And of course you've got to remember this is um, actually uh, plastic card which has been heated and been moulded to the shape that you require and obviously it will react with certain glues like um, boss stick for example it certainly doesn't like that and it will warp and ripple and all sorts so I generally use Araldite um, and obviously I apply it along the top edges of the side rails here um, get the roof positioned and with Araldite luckily it doesn't go off too quickly so you can move it around reposition it and do what you want with it um, then obviously elastic bands this will hold the roof on while it dries and a good thick piece of card which I usually put along the bottom of this carriage and it will protect the sides uh, from any elastic bands which may damage the finish of the paintwork or the lacquer etc. So I will add some glue onto this, get the roof positioned and then show you what it looks like afterwards and then finally removing those elastic bands. So I've just added a small amount of glue along the top edge of the rail. So I just need to position the roof. So it's got a 
stuff hanging over at each end and the sides as well. It generally looks pretty good, so it's sitting quite well apart from this end. So I'll need to put the elastic bands over it. So that's all secure with a fair few elastic bands around it so it's nice and uh, secure. Uh, as I say it's best to use this glue I find because I can adjust it, move it around and do what I need to it. So that's all stuck down. Looks quite good at that end and quite good at that end so it looks pretty good. So what I need to do now is leave it for a little bit and come back to it in a little while once the glue has gone off and set and then we should have a nicely complete carriage. So the roof is now glued on with its araldite and it's been going off for a few days making sure it's thoroughly dry. Um, so it's now glued on and now we have one complete carriage which is glazed, populated, finished, decorated etc. Um, so it's now ready to join the rest of my uh, London Brighton South Coast Stroudley carriages and I hope you have all enjoyed this video and hopefully it helps you get creative and start kit building over this uh, isolation period um, during the pandemic which is going on globally at the moment hopefully i'll put a few more videos up in the future to keep you all occupied um, next video should be about coupling converters which i've been working on for a number of years um, so tune in next time and we'll have a look at those in the coming weeks